In problem 5, I have 3x squared equals 25. So I'll divide both sides by 3. And on the left, the 3's cancel out. And I'm left with x squared equals 25 thirds. And I take the square root of each side, and that gives me x on the left is equal to plus or minus the square root of 25 thirds. And I can split that into two fractions. I'm going to write plus or minus, or split it in, into one fraction with two radicals. Plus or minus the square root of 25 over the square root of 3. Now one of the rules for simplifying radicals says that we shouldn't have radicals in the denominator down there. So I'm going to take this plus or minus, this, well the square root of 25, that's easy. I'm just going to write that as a 5. So I'll write this plus or minus 5 over the square root of 3. And then to get the radical out of the de denominator, I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Now the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 is just 1. So when I've multiplied by that, I haven't changed the value any. I'm just multiplying by 1. But what that does, that, may, that allows me to multiply these two fractions together. And that will get rid of the radical in the denominator. It gives us a rational number in the denominator. So this process is sometimes called rationalizing the denominator. So I end up simply with 5 times the square root of 3 on the top. And you should see on the bottom that if we multiply across here, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is simply 3. And I need my plus or minus sign. So plus or minus 5 root 3 over 3 is my answer. Now when I did this, multiplied by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, that got my radical sign out of the denominator, but it introduced a radical into the numerator. And that's OK. The goal here is to rationalize the denominator. And this is considered properly simplified. This, what I started with over here before I did that, is not. In example number 6, 16x squared equals 3. I'll divide each side by 16. And here the 16's cancel. And I'm left with x squared equals 3 sixteenths. And so now I take the square root of each side and I get x is plus or minus the square root of 3 sixteenths. And again, I'll write that as a fraction with two radicals. I'll write plus or minus the square root of 3 over the square root of 16. And the square root of 16 simplifies nicely. That's simply 4. So I end up with an answer of plus or minus the square root of 3 over 4. And I'm done. I don't have to rationalize the denominator because it's already a rational number. And having a radical up there in the numerator is OK. And once again, for both of these, if I needed to, I could get a decimal approximation. But if I'm not asked for a decimal approximation, I'll simply leave the answer like this, because these are exact answers. And these are what's called simplified radical form. We simplified the square root of 16 down here. We rationalized the denominator down here. Uh, we simplified the square root of 25 to give us the 5. So everything is simplified as much as we can. This is, and, and it's left in radical form, which is the exact answer. So this is sometimes called simplified radical form. And that's typically how a math teacher wants you to leave your answer, the exact answer in simplified radical form, rather than a decimal approximation. Again, in the real world, the decimal approximation may, may really be useful.